the evolution of the For you tonight the first of which is going to be our main event the welterweight champion ronald the machine gun john from the 808 fight factory in hawaii he recently won that belt taking on the likes of shoni carter but he's going to be defending another great fighter tonight john the natural alessio now john alessio likes to stay on his feet and duke it out but he has great ground skills coming from millennia jiu-jitsu academy also here tonight our middleweight champion Dean Lister also recently crowned the absolute champion from the Abu Dhabi Championship. He's going to be defending the 185 pound belt. He's going to be taking on a very game fighter from the MASH Academy in Michigan. That is James Lee. Now James Lee has fought some of the biggest names in the business and he has the ferocity to win the belt here tonight. Last but certainly not least, our 185 pound champion Charlie Valencia. He's going to be battling out one wrestler, Greg Mayer, who's decimated everybody thus far in mixed martial arts. On my side here tonight, our king of the cage matchmaker, Chris Cordero. Now, Chris, you know these fighters better than anyone here. Tell us what we should be excited to see tonight. Well, I'm really excited about all the title fights here tonight. We've got John the Natural Alessio taking on Ronald Jun for the title. Both of these guys have incredible knockout power and great grappling. We've got Dean Lister, Abu Dhabi champion. He's won the absolute division, and that means that he's beaten guys in several weight categories to win that title, taking on James Lee. And James Lee's training boxing at the Kronk Gym in Detroit. And he's a great wrestler, too, Michigan State level. Now we've got a lightweight battle, 145 pound Charlie Valencia taking on Division One wrestler, like you said, Greg Mayer. And these guys, I just can't wait to see the explosive speed from either of them. All right, well, before we go any farther, we need to break down the rules for you here in King of the Cage. First of all, the standard matches have two five-minute rounds. Beyond that, any championship fight has three five-minute rounds. Now, these matches can be won several different ways. Obviously, an opponent can be knocked out, and he can tap out. Also, the referee can stop the fight, or the doctor can stop the fight. And last but certainly not least, your corner can throw in the towel for you. Well, we've got illegal issues, too. That means no headbutting, no eye gouging, hair pulling, fish hooking, strikes to the back of the head or spinal area, no small joint manipulation, and no intentionally throwing your opponent out of the cage. Diamond Bell Bar, California. He fights with T. Robidon. He stands five feet seven. He weighs in at 174 pounds. Please welcome Richard Soli. All right, this fight, pretty much our welterweight division, 175 pounds. Traditionally, welterweight is 170 pounds. Richard Solis, five foot seven, like you heard, coming out of Diamond Bar, California, where he has a style of fight called shoot fighting. He has a one and two record in mixed martial arts. He's hoping to lead King of the Cage tonight with a 500 average. He fought a couple of big names. He took on John Cole twice, lost both of those, but he did beat Ricky Libertini at King of the Cage 17 here at Saboba. And I'll tell you, Solis is a game fighter, great punching ability, and decent wrestling background. And 
his opponent. From Hesperia, California, he fights with the American Jiu-Jitsu Academy. He stands five feet seven. He weighed in at 170 pounds. Please welcome Alex Rickers. Here you see Alex Rickers. He stands five feet seven inches tall. Weighs in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Hesperia, California. His fighting style is jiu-jitsu. Has a record of two wins and two losses. Almost even with his opponent there. Fighting out of the American Jiu-Jitsu School. He's self-trained. He has fought overseas in Taiwan and the Philippines. He started training in mixed martial arts about four years ago. His favorite technique, he says anything, but he likes leg and ankle locks quite a bit. And his goals in this sport is to get more students involved in mixed martial arts. fighters waiting to take on each other we got the doc doc hamilton refereeing the fight let's listen in rules with both of you i expect a good clean fight i expect you to protect yourself at all times listen for my command at all times touch them up go back to your corner all right here's the tale of the tape rickard's coming in 36 years old five foot seven 170 pounds with a record of two and two Solis, 33 years old, 5'7", 175 pounds, with a record of 1 and 2. Like I said, looking to leave here with an average of 500. Here we go. King of the cage, Renegade. You know, and I expect to see Solis throw heavy hands here. And Rickards go for the takedowns. Whoa. Just like I said, there's that hard punching ability from Solis. Rickards does seem calm, though. Fighters almost seem to be conserving a lot of energy, not really going too hard at each other. Throwing some knees there, but... Well, it looks like the second one connected on the chin for Rickards. Rickards taking his time. He wants to see if he can out-wrestle out Solis. Getting pulled up against the fence. Is Solis going to get the takedown? with the cross face. It looks like he might be able to take the back. Solis moves incorrectly. Now this is crucial for Rickards. If, if he gets taken down, he's going to be in a very bad spot there up against the fence. Solis makes the takedown happen. Now he's on top of the full mount position. Straight into that mount. No good for Rickards. Now Solis looks like he was going to pass, like he didn't want to be in that full mount. I think when he was trying to go to side guard, Rickards felt it, took the opportunity to sneak out of there. Big knee to the body there from Solis. Oh, straight into the, looking for that rear naked choke. Rickards defending well thus far, escapes the choke. However, not in a much better position with the full mount. Well, Solis was here earlier. He didn't land any punches from there. Rickard so far been able to defend really well. Now, last time Solis looked to pass the side mount from the mount. He's got light punches thrown here. Doc Hamilton might stop the fight at any second. Oh, Rickard's though. Oh, escaping out the bag, and now he's on top of Solis. So from what it looked like was about was a fight that was about to be stopped, all of a sudden Rickard's on top. Mixed martial arts, anything can happen just that quick. Rickards. Oh, big punches by Rickards now. Bringing the pain with those punches right there. Well, it seems like Rickards been able to mount more of an offense inside the guard than Solis was from the mount. <laughs> now Rickards, oh look he's going. He's, he's going for the heel hook. He's setting his profile. He likes leg locks. Is he going to get it? Now, this is where it's dangerous for both fighters because if you go for the heel hook or the calf crunch, you're making yourself susceptible to the same thing. Solis gets his foot popped out of that bad position. Now, Solis needs to just stand up and step out of that from Rickards. Here he comes. Now he's in side position. Great spot to be. Bunch of shots there, right hands to the body of Rickards. 
Now you see the downside of going for the heel hook or a toe hold is if you're on top and you go for that position, you lose position, you can end up on the bottom. Look at the guillotine. Look at the guillotine. And he's got it. That's it, a tap from Rickards. Sorley is winning by brute force, just standing up with Rickards. And I'll tell you what, I didn't expect him to win with the submission. I thought he'd win with punches. But uh, hey, he's out here surprising us today. Two fighters shaking hands, showing sportsmanship after their bout. So Richard Solis got what he was looking for, a victory. That'll make him two and two we'll here in King of the Cage. Ladies and gentlemen, after three minutes, 19 seconds of the first round, your winner by chokeout, Richard Solis. All right, let's check out the replay. Here we see Solis on top in the full mount. Now this is where I thought Rickards was, was gonna be done. He didn't look like he was defending very much, but he spun around, gave up his back, and escaped out the back into the guard of Richard Solis. Here's where Solis finished the fight. Guillotine choke, had the full arm underneath and extended it out. Rickards had nowhere to go. So a back and forth fight, ending abruptly with that guillotine choke. Soli showed some great power right there by almost lifting Rickards up off of the floor. out of San Bernardino, California. He fights with the Shark Tank. He stands five feet nine. He weighed in at 175 pounds. Please welcome Michael Penobar. There he is, a welterweight fighter. Name as the execution from San Bernardino, like you heard. He is a submission fighter from the Shark Tank. He does have some great experience. He fought our champion here in King of the Cage, Ronald the Machine Gun Chun, in Ronald's hometown of Hawaii. Now he lists his favorite technique as the KO, and his goal in the near future is to fight the winner of Ronald Chun and John Alessio later on tonight in our main event. Tell you what, Chris, I see all these 170, 175 pound fighters, and I, I have to admit that I'm a, I am sizing them up, wondering which one of them I, I could be taking on next. Well, I've seen you in action before. And his opponent from Fort Worth, Texas. He fights with Travis Ladder's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 175 pounds. Please welcome Buddy Clinton. Here he is, Buddy Clinton, six feet tall, 170 pounds, fighting out of Dallas, Texas. His style is jiu-jitsu, and if you look, he's got a really impressive corner. Former champion, Hoist Gracie. He trains with Travis Luter and Hoist Gracie. He also trained previously with Guy Metzger, a King of the Cage veteran who's fought here in the past. Wow, so Buddy Clinton really bringing some big names with his background to this fight. Absolutely. His uh, management's been calling for a long time to get him out here, and he's finally getting a shot. Had an opportunity a few months ago in King of the Cage Invasion in Albuquerque, but actually ended up getting bit by a brown recruit spider and wasn't able to compete. You see him getting a hug there from Hoist Gracie. Now, what, what I'm interested to see is if Buddy is a traditional jiu-jitsu fighter coming out of the Hoist Gracie camp, or if he's a well-rounded fighter. Well-rounded.
himself. He used to kickbox and train with Guy Mesger, I'm sure. He's going to have some great stand-up ability, but this is my first chance to really get an opportunity to observe what he can do in the ring. All right, guys, listen to me. Break when I say break. Okay, if I'm tapping on you, tell him that's it, that's it. You know the other guy tapped out or passed out or knocked out. Understand? All right. Any questions? All right, give it hell out there now. The tail of the tape. Buddy Clinton, 29 years old, 6 feet tall, 170 pounds, a true welterweight with a 3-0 record. Michael Pendlebur, 26 years old, a little bit younger and a little shorter at 5 foot 9, also 170 pounds with a record of 6-3-0. Time to get into action with the welterweight warriors. Oh, Whoa, big. Pendleburn, big overhand right. Almost knocked. Looked like the fight could have been over right there. And there's a sweep type takedown attempt by Clinton. Seems like he was diverted there by Pendleburn. Well, buddy, Clinton's jiu-jitsu is going to be put to the test immediately. He's on his back with his opponent in his guard. Well, with Hoist Grace in this corner, I'm going to be surprised if he doesn't have a fantastic guard. Now look at Michael Pendleburn with the great ring generalship, taking Buddy Clinton where he wants him, right over to his corner and the fence. He wants to be able to hear his corner's instructions. Almost getting, is that a triangle he's going for, Chris? It's got it. the beginning of a triangle there. He just has to bring the arm across, but Pendleburn escapes. Go, go, go. Oh. Pendleburn letting him up. I don't know what he's doing. He had the opportunity there with Buddy Clinton on his back. Well, I think he wants to finish the fight with those big punches. And there's another one that connected. Now, Buddy Clinton right there throwing a low right kick. And Michael Pendleburn saying, you throw your kicks all day. I'm going to throw this overhand right and see what you think of that. There he goes right for the triangle setup again. And it looks like this time it's a little bit tighter. He's going to go for possibly to a plata. But again, Pendleburn able to escape the submission attempts of Clinton. Pendleburn needs to take advantage of those positions, you know, they don't, they, don't, they don't come along all the time. When you have an advantageous position like that, you need to make use of it. Now Clinton pushing forward, and Adler stuck against the cage here. He gets a leg trick takedown. Now for the first time, Buddy Clinton on top, on the ground. Couple strikes to the face there up against the cage. We'll see if Michael Pendleboer is over to, able to defend the strikes. Oh, go for the cap crunch. Goes for the old school Oleg Taktorov style leg lock. Now Michael Pendleboer cannot sit here and let Buddy Clinton adjust that and get it tighter. He needs to do something at this point. Pendleboer fighting the pain there. You can see it in his face. He's cringing. Now, this is a submission where you, nothing can be broken. You're not going to have a broken leg or a broken foot or a tendon get broken. It's just painful. Well, it looks like Pendleburn knows it. He's working to get out of that, and you can see the pain on his face, facial expressions. But he's working out of it, and it seems like he's going to escape here. And we'll have to see what kind of position he ends up in. He needs to push off with his right foot right there and push against Buddy Clinton. He can't wait. Looks like he's worked his way out of it now. Pendleburn doing a relatively well job against a Gracie student, Buddy Clinton. Possibly looking for a toehold or a knee bar down there. Go hold the fence. Hold the fence. Looks like Clinton's about to fully capture the back of Pendleburn. He could end it, let's say, hoist Gracie style. We first saw those rear naked chokes so many years ago. Now, Buddy Clinton trying to sink in those hooks. For those of you who don't know, when the fighter is able to lock his feet and legs around the other fighter's waist, that's called sinking the hooks. It's a great position to be in, easy to control your opponent underneath or above you. You see here, Clinton with the long arms, able to attack from funny angles, going underneath the armpit, hitting Pendler on the chin. Now, at this point, I'm not sure if Pendleburn is saving his energy or if he is tired. Possibly could be waiting for the opportunity to explode up and back to his feet. He baited him to lift the head up. He got one arm around. You know, he's got a lot of pressure here because if he doesn't act quickly, Cecil Peoples will restart them in a stand-up position. 
Now, this is where the strength in mixed martial arts comes in. Panel burn needs to just use brute strength and stand up and get out of there, whether Buddy Clint decides to hold on or not. Again, here's the warning from Cecil Peoples. And Clinton taking heed. He goes for that choke. And there's a the tap out. That's oh. it. That's it. Clinton victorious. So Buddy Clinton waiting for his opportunity. He saw it and took advantage of it. Suck in that rear naked choke on Michael Pendleburg. So like I said, Buddy Clinton waiting for the chance. He saw the neck, threw it down there, got the rear naked choke. One of the easiest ways to finish the fight right there. Ladies and gentlemen, after four minutes, 26 seconds of the first round, your winner by rear naked choke, Buddy Clinton. <laughs> Here comes the replay. Take a look, this is when Clinton had him in trouble with the calf crunch, but Penedler was able to take the pain and escape. You can see him grimacing, obviously painful, but he held on and was able to later on escape that position, but not for long as Buddy Clinton right there with the rear mount, hooks in, complete rear naked choke, nowhere to go for Michael Pendleburg. Hoist Gracie right there. Definitely an influence on Buddy Clinton. Hoist won many matches in the old UFC days with that rear naked choke. Next bout, first out of the blue corner. He is from Huntington Beach, California. He fights with De La O Jiu Jitsu. He stands five feet eight. He weighed in at 175 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Kenny. A Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter, 175 pounds, Thomas Kenny. He is 2-0, so far undefeated in mixed martial arts. Fighting in Gladiator Challenge and here in King of the Cage at Saboba. Now he's from De La O Jiu-Jitsu in Huntington Beach. And he also has a background in high school wrestling. Looks like he's in really great shape for this bout here tonight. Looks like he's taking this fight very seriously. Looks very concentrated. And I gotta say, I really like the hairdo half and half. And his opponent fights out of Whittier, California. He is an independent fighter. He stands six feet four. He weighed in at 202 pounds. Please welcome Paul Sid. <laughs> Here he comes, Paul Sid, much taller fighter out of the two. He is six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds, fighting out of Whittier, California. This 
style, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He has a mixed martial arts record. Actually, this is his first time fighting in mixed martial arts. He's fighting out of Frazier's martial arts, and he wrestled in high school. Started getting involved this year in mixed martial arts. His favorite technique right now is a choke. His goals in this sport, he wants to come up on top and be the best fighter he can be. Now, the first thing you gotta notice is a 30 pound weight difference in these fighters. So, Ball Seed immediately has the advantage right there. Let's listen in to Herb Dean. All right, gentlemen. The world, the world, and the world's moving, right? Any questions? No? Okay, follow my instructions at all times, and I'm gonna stay out of your way. Let's you do what you came to do. When we ring the bell, you're ready to come out fighting. Good luck to both of you. Look at the size difference as we listen to the tail of the tape. See, 19 years old, 6 of 4, 205 pounds with no mixed martial arts record. While Kenny, 24 years old, 5 foot 8, 175 pounds, 30 pounds lighter, but he has a record of 9 4 0. Will the size or the experience win out? We'll see. Well, Paul Sid has a long reach there and was able to land a one-two. And it looks like he may have a guillotine choke right away on Thomas Kenny. Yeah, Thomas Kenny shooting in right away for that double leg, but obviously when you shoot in immediately like that, you do give up the guillotine choke. It's a lot of leverage with a much taller fighter there trying to pressure that guillotine choke, but Kenny fighting out of it. Now, Paul Seed, for a fighter with no record, looks very, very calm right there. Well, he freed himself from the guillotine danger that he was in. Now Kenny on top, landing some hammering right hands to the head of Paul Seed. Thomas Kenny came into the fight looking very, very serious. All business right here. Sid keeping his guard really closed. You see the fighters working up against the king of the cage fence. Sid doing a good job thus far of defending. He wants to survive and get back to his feet. Now you can hear Thomas Kenny's corner asking him to pass the guard of Paul Seed. Paul Seed trying to pull the head down on Thomas Kenny, but Kenny's been able to sneak in punches and there's a big forearm strike. Three huge forearms right there from Thomas Kenny. Paul Seed pushes Kenny away. Paul Seed got a wake up call there. Well, he's definitely going to lose the round if he continues to stay in this position, eating those punches from Kenny or those big forearm blows. I thought he might have ended the fight with some of those. You can definitely hear the impact of those forearms from Thomas Kenny. Like you said, Paul Sid, not doing so well here in this first round. He does have two rounds since this is a non-title fight, but he's in a bad way right now with Thomas Kenny on top, delivering those right hands. Thomas Kenny attempting a key lock now. He's got position. Look at the Sid position of these trying fighters. to come around and take the back of Kenny. And now Sid on top. Goes back attempting the guillotine, but Thomas Kenny's got an arm inside this time. Wow. Paul Sid somehow evading Thomas Kenny for the moment. And you can see Kenny's about to pop his head out. He steps into the half guard of Sid. Come on, let's work, guys. Let's work. And you know, for his first fight, Sid does look extremely relaxed. Yeah, he looks like a veteran down there, no problem. Working it out, being patient, waiting for the opportunity. Comes a submission attempt by Kenny. Possibly a key lock and a big forearm. Takes the key lock and hammers away. But bridging. The forearm strike. Paul Sid bridging momentarily. Kenny trying to maintain position. 
Okay. At this point, I can imagine Paul C just wants to get back to his feet and use that long reach. Well, he attempted it there, almost got up to where he needed to be. But Thomas Kenny has good wrestling ability. He's been able to maintain a top position. Thomas Kenny in the side mount. Has the opportunity to take the full mount if he wants. But he looks content to sit there, possibly go for a, a key lock or some more of those forearms. I really like what he did earlier when he acted like he was going to go for the key lock and <laughs> smashed him. Irv Dean standing these fighters up. I'm not sure why. Not enough action for him. Back on their feet. Big left hook thrown by Kenny. Didn't connect. Paul C. looks disheartened thus far here in the first round, but he did deliver two knees there from the clinch with his back up against the fence. Another knee. Another great takedown by Kenny. So even though Thomas Kenny dominated this fight on all aspects, Paul Sitt is very gay, had some knees there. He was able to escape several submissions and took a beating there here in the first round. Uh, I can't see the judges seeing it any other way than all Thomas Kenny in this first round. Dominated about every aspect of the fight. And it looks like Sid got lucky at the end of the first round because I think that Kenny was in a position to finish it there the way Sid is looking tired. Uh, look at okay, go to the hands. He is winded. He is done. He's grabbing that DC because he's tired. He doesn't know what else to do. Bring, his hands are already down. They're already down in his pockets. How do you feel? You tired? You winded? You winded? Take a deep breath, okay? All right, you're going to be all right. You got plenty of time. So you hear Thomas Kenny's corner telling him, take your time, did a good job in the first round, just keep it up. Well, he's got a veteran John DeLo in his corner. Now this is exactly what Paul Sid needed though. He could possibly, you know, go out there and uh, get his win back and come back with a new plan of attack. Somehow try to stay on his feet. Here it is, the second and final round of Paul Sid and Thomas Kenny. Well, let's see if okay, Sid's got any on. gas left in the tank or if Thomas Kenny's just going to come out and finish him off. I'll tell you what, the way he's slumped over right here, I think that Kenny's going to come out and just try to take his head off. His corner was screaming, hey, he's got nothing left to row hands. There you go. Right there. Right there. Push now. All you got. Once again, Thomas Denny looks like he means business. Work over there. You ready to fight? Let's go. Paul Sid looking winded, just now putting his mouthpiece in. Come on! Almost looks like he wants nothing to do with this match at this point. Well, I think he's gassed out. He took some serious blows with the forearm strikes that Kenny was able to inflict on him in the first round. And that kind of punishment will make you tired. You can hear Thomas Kenny's corner. Nice pass. Almost pass completely. Paul Sid still keeping a half guard there. But it looks like this is going to be the end of the fight. Paul Sid not defending at all. Eating blow after blow. Herb Dean calling a stop to the action here in round number two. Well, Paul Sid has seen better days than this one here at Saboba. There you see Kenny still looking fresh. Looks like he was in great shape. Could have gone three rounds tonight. Here's the replay. Both these fighters still on their feet. But Sid offering almost no defense whatsoever to the double leg takedown. Kenny shooting in immediately and passing the guard to the full mount and delivering right after right. Both punches and forearms. This is the finish. Kenny battered him with forearm shots. Herb Dean had no choice but to stop the bout. I'm impressed with Thomas Kenny. 3-0 now. 
is the Huntington Beach fighter. Paul Sid being helped to his feet. Here's a little bit of applause from the crowd. Now we're gonna get our official announcement from Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, after 39 seconds of the second round, your winner from Huntington Beach, California, Tom Kenny. First out of the blue corner, from Ocala, Florida, he fights with Team Ghetto. He stands five feet, seven inches tall. He weighed in at 160 pounds. Please welcome Charles Crazy Horse Bennett. Here he is, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett, one of my favorite fighters to watch in action. He has fought here at Sabobo Casino in the past. And, uh, Coming to us all the way from Ocala, Florida, training at Coca Pelli's gym under Adam Pollock. He is one of the most explosive fighters, huge takedowns, does amateur boxing matches several times a week. Look for him to end the fight with some kind of furious pace. I mean, this guy can drop you on your head about 100 times in a bounce. That record, he actually beat Gerald Streeman by submission. He fought Dwayne Ludwig as well. Well, he actually didn't beat him by submission. He got knee barred. He got knee barred, got out of it, and bashed, punished Gerald with a bunch of right hands to the head, forced him to tap out. <laughs> And his opponent from Rancho Cucamonga, California, he fights with body shots. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, and weighed in at 160 pounds. Please welcome William the Bull Serpai. Look at these credentials for William Serpai. He is a current world champion in Muay Thai. He has three world titles, two U.S. titles, and two intercontinental titles. Coming out in the traditional Muay Thai gear. He does have a record of 5-1 in mixed martial arts, so it looks like the Muay Thai has contributed to his MMA game. traditional intro for the Muay Thai fighters. All these fighters with a similar intro. And running the Suicidal Tendencies logo on the back. <laughs> Gotta like that from William Serpine. Now fighting crazy horse is like a suicidal mission. Serapai, 31 years old, 5'7", 155 pounds, with a record of 5-1, as I mentioned. Now Crazy Horse, 24 years old, 5'7", 155 pounds. Here we go, get ready for an exciting one, Crazy Horse and Serapai. Right there, right there, now get four. Well, Crazy Horse can do a little bit of everything. There you go, Serapai throwing a kick early. I don't think Crazy Horse wants much oh. with those kicks. Crazy Horse with some crazy hand speed. Oh. 
big slams right there, just like I told you earlier. And Crazy Horse is a furious guy to fight. Wow, Crazy Horse dropping him on the head. Listen to the crowd. Everyone's excited. Serapai closing the guard, though, trying to slow down the action. Crazy Horse with the slam showing his authority. <laughs> and Crazy Horse has really been training cardio for this event. It's about been the only problem he's had in the past. And I think that Serapai is going to be in for a really rough ride here. Serapai, Muay Thai fighter, is not where he wants to be on his back with a man like Crazy Horse. Couple knees there from Crazy Horse. Three, as a matter of fact. Crazy Horse just will continue to try and hurt you the best way he can. Serapai needs to try to control Crazy Horse. He needs to control those arms, control that head, slow down the action, and somehow escape by either crawling up the fence or simply bridging Crazy Horse off of him. Serapai really tying him up here. I'm still in shock from the beginning of that fight. Serapai throwing a leg kick missing. Crazy Horse coming back. Crazy Horse passes the guard. He's got the back of Serapai. Serapai tries to roll out of it, gets up back up bottom, but now this could be real trouble. You don't want to have Crazy Horse blasting away on top with a full mount. You can hear Joe Stevenson telling Crazy Horse to deliver those forearms as well as the regular punches. Crazy Horse picking his shots here on top, and serapai has got nowhere to go. He is just taking a beating up against the cage. Right here, pretty much the only thing you do is almost give up your back oh. and somehow try to escape out of your back. He slipped in a forearm on the chin. Serapai threw a hook from underneath that connected and moved the horse a little bit. But Sir now, Serapai doing a good job getting off the fence now. Looks like there's some blood on the top of Serapai. Bridging though, Serapai, look at that, almost escaping. Crazy are showing good balance though. Yeah, it's hard to buck a horse off yet. <laughs> Serapai using that fence though to buck Crazy Horse. You know, Charles Bennett really being composed in this fight. Usually he'd be doing some wild stuff. Oh, and a kick from underneath. A kick to the back of the head while being fully mounted. I've never, ever seen that in a fight before. Serapai. Getting very creative from the bottom. You know, and I thought that Crazy Horse was going to be the only guy doing anything crazy. But now it's Serapai. Oh, oh Serapai on his feet. Oh. Now, you know, Crazy Horse threw a lot of punches. He might have punched himself out. Serapai here with the crazy leg kicks. Serapai really needs to take advantage of this and kick those legs. Beat up on those legs so Crazy Horse will have trouble standing later on. He needs to use this position. If he waits, the fight will get stood up. Serapai elected to let Crazy Horse get back up. We're going to see him on their feet. Listen to the crowd. Here comes the stand-up. Serapai moves in. Oh! And a big takedown by Charles Bennett. And now wow. he's in his opponent's corner. Serapai del delivering the head kick, and he landed. But it looked like it must have been a glancing blow because Crazy Horse immediately took him down without a problem. See the speed, the way Crazy Horse rushes in on you. Charles Bennett, well, probably the most explosive fighter at 155 pounds. I'm impressed by Serapai, though. Weathering the storm, coming back out. That's going to be the end of the first round. An exciting round, to say the least, Chris. Wow, great action in that. We saw some interesting things. Big takedown right away by Crazy Horse. Syrup while fully mounted. Give me one more round like that. Throws a head kick.
You're on pay-per-view. You got your daddy, your mommy. You got your family watching you, dog. Circle. Set a four into him. Take him down here. What? It's perfect. It's perfect. Perfect, dog. Mission crazy, boys. Your son's watching, man. Your little boy's watching his daddy. So you heard Crazy Horse was concerned about the cut in his eye, Chris. Again. Let's look at the replay. You see the slam on the back of the head. Crazy Horse with a brutal slam on Syrupi. Now back to the stand-up. Look at the head kick. A glancing blow, but it did land nonetheless. And great advice from corner man Joe Stevenson telling him how to win the fight. Here we go, the second round. I hope it's as good as the first. I really want to see if Sirpai is able to use those Muay Thai techniques to beat a great fighter like Crazy Horse. Oh, good kick to the body by Sirpai. The horse comes back with a looping right. Switching stance from southpaw to regular. Sirpai trying to sprawl, but I don't think he's able to. And this is where Sierra is going to have to be careful because Crazy Horse is so strong. Big over the back takedown. Crazy Horse, so creative with those takedowns, wants to make the most out of every single one. Sierra needs to get to his feet now. Remember, he lost the first round. And this could be trouble. He's going to position for a submission. Does Sierra have the triangle, Chris? Well, he doesn't quite have it right here, and Charles Bennett's been known to be putting all kinds of submissions and just doesn't seem to tap out. Sirpai, though, doing a good job at neutralizing Crazy Horse from the bottom, I'd say. Now the horse free from the legs. Passing the guard into the half Now he's still inside the guard here. But not in that position where he was likely to get triangled earlier. Short forearm strike by the horse. A couple of short punches. Zero five backed up against the cage like in earlier in round number one. Doc Hamilton right there reminding these fighters to stay busy or he's going to stand him up. Here he goes, standing back up. Zero five gets another shot. We'll see if Sirpai is able to make it happen as he is in a deficit at this point. And I'll tell you what, Sirpai has to watch out at the hand power that Crazy Horse has because he is known to knock people out with his punching capability as well as his big takedowns. You know, Sirpai really not offering much of a sprawl or a takedown defense against Crazy Horse. Well, I'll tell you, with a guy this quick, it's hard to offer up much of anything, even if you have a great one. Great shots by Crazy Horse from on top. As you can hear his corner yelling words of encouragement the whole time while Crazy Horse just punishes Syrupai. Oh, good shot down the pipe. Looks like it landed on the chin. Whoa, Syrupai again. Sirupai looks like he's going to go for a knee bar. But this could be trouble because he's just in a position where Crazy Horse can hit him better now. It almost seems like Sirupai is in a worse position with Crazy Horse in his guard than when he's giving up the mount. <laughs> Those of you familiar with mixed martial arts know that the mount is one of the worst positions to be in. And although you are on the bottom, if, you're, if your opponent is in your guard, you do have some control and you are able to defend. Look at once again, back to their feet. One more stand up by Doc Hamilton. Sirupai has to make something happen if he wants to win this fight. Sirupai getting chance after chance. Looks like Crazy Horse is in good shape. Shoots low, he's got a double right away. Giving up multiple takedowns is Serapai. And that is one of the criteria the judges score on here in King of the Cage. Let's go. 
Syrupai really tying up Crazy Horse. Doesn't want to get hit anymore. Looks like he wants to attempt the triangle choke, but just couldn't get the arm or leg up high enough. All right, let's get him up. And what? once again, Doc Hamilton stands up both fighters. The second and final round, almost oh. over. Syrupai, good front kick by Crazy Horse. Charles Bennett, this might be Syrupai's last chance, as I was going to say. Drives hard. Syrupai back against the cage. Looks like a big slam. Oh! And a huge slam on his end. A pile driver, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Great action. You can't ask for more fun than when Crazy Horse Charles Bennett is in the ring. Wow. And if that didn't seal the victory for him, I don't know what would. The second and final round right there. Unbelievable. Crazy Horse, <laughs> three different huge slams in that fight. One to the back of the head, one up and over his entire body, almost like a suplex, and the third and final one right before the last bell, a pile driver on William Syrupai. Charles Bennett out there doing it for his son, Charles Bennett Jr. Judges are going to have to tally up their decisions on this one. Personally, I cannot see it going any other way than Charles Crazy Horse Bennett, although Syrupai did do some interesting things from positions that we don't normally see anything from, like that leg kick while he was fully mounted to the back of the head was extremely impressive. Something I've never seen before. I wonder if Syrupai trained that or if that just was spur of the moment. Tyson Johnson about to give us the official judge's decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after two exciting rounds, we have a decision. And your winner, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett. So the Crazy Horse getting yet another victory. Much to the delight of the crowd. Now let's look at the replay. One of the many takedowns that Crazy Horse had on William Syrupai. Look at him pick him up, body slam, pro wrestling style. Driving his head right into the mat. Nothing else to say, but wow. One more look. <laughs> wow. Incredible takedown. I can't say it enough times, Crazy Horse definitely earning his nickname tonight here at King of the Cage. He comes from Ontario, California. He fights with Alicio Silva, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and the Submission Factory. He stands five feet nine. He weighs in at 155 pounds. Please welcome JC, plenty of skills, Joe Camacho. Like Muhammad Ali with all those nicknames. Joe Camacho, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. He is trained by Aloysio Silva and Charlie Valencia. Looking, look very, very serious. He's 31 years old, originally from East Los Angeles, now living in Ontario, California. In 
is traditional Valley Tudo shorts with the ankle braces. And let's meet his opponent. And his opponent, out of the red corner, hails from Newport Beach, California. He fights with Team Oyama. He stands five feet eight. He weighed in at 155 pounds. Please welcome Giuliano Prado. Here he comes, five foot eight, 155 pounds. All the way from Sao Paulo, Brazil, now living and training in Newport Beach, California in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Training with Team Oyama, a lot of impressive teammates. He's got a mixed martial arts record of three wins and one loss. And he was a former Gladiator Challenge champion at the 155 pound division. Yeah, like you mentioned, Giuliano Prado training with Team Oyama. Some of the biggest and best names in mixed martial arts. Colin Oyama must be doing something right down there in Orange County. You're going to see with Giuliano Prado a really great emphasis on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu techniques. But I'll tell you what, Joe Camacho is no stranger to that. He has great Jiu Jitsu. That's all right, that's on the run. Mouthpiece? Okay. Come here, guys. Okay, now listen to me. If one of you start to tap out or I think the fight is over, I'm going to grab the other guy and tell him to stop. Back off. All right? So you stop hitting, stop choking, whatever you're doing. All right? Give me a good, clean fight. Break when I say break now. Here we go, the tail of the tape, Giuliano Pato, 30 years old, 5'8", 155 pounds, with an MMA record of 3-1. and one. While Camacho, 30, also 5'9", 155 pounds, with a record of 6-5. and five. Are you ready? Are you ready? Dance. Here we are, Joe Camacho and Giuliano Prado. I'm not sure if Camacho is going to try to keep it standing or if he wants to take it right to the ground with Prado. Well, Giuliano Prado with a background in jiu-jitsu. However, training with, with Timo Yama, his stand-up can't be lagging too much. You know, we've seen Joe Camacho end and win fights with punches standing. Prado throws a great front kick there, tie style. Joe Camacho going for a home run, but eats a right hand from, from Prado. And now Prado with a great position. Now look at Joe Camacho with a... Nice takedown. He had a huge disadvantage right there. Had his back given up, and he lasted quite a while before taken down by Giuliano Prado. Well, Camacho was able to get into a position underneath where he could get his guard back right away. So all was not lost, but it was a great takedown by Prado. Prado delivering the throws, bringing up his guard high. Camacho going for that leg. Prado able to flatten him out. Good side position here, but Camacho sneaks in a hip almost. Yeah, Prado there twisting his hips, delivering more punches, staying busy, and now in the side mount. Prado looks like he's in great condition physically. Probably a factor there, training with Timo Yama. All those guys are in a great, outstanding shape. <laughs> you can hear his Team Oyama teammate, Quentin Jackson, telling Prado to make those punches count. Some of those punches didn't look like they had much fury behind them. Almost like he was just going for the points, trying to distract Joe Camacho, possibly. Camacho able to almost get his full guard back in now. Looks like a very evenly matched fight physically, Chris. Both of these guys' styles are a little bit similar. Prado looks like he's in a little bit stronger shape right now. But you can never count Camacho out. He can end the fight several ways. He's got great submissions. And he's got heavy hands. Back to their feet, these fighters. Camacho delivering a good right. Joe Camacho tried a leaping left hook, but Prado came over the top. And there's some good uppercuts. Oh, Prado, Prado's out. He's done. He is done. 
He dropped him with those hands. Just like I said, he can knock you out. And he did it right here tonight on pay-per-view. Great victory for Joe Camacho defeating the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, Juliano Prado. Juliano Prado is no joke, so for a victory like that for Joe Camacho is very meaningful. Joe Camacho looking mean for the cameras. So Joe Camacho getting off of his back, got back to his feet, and ended the fight the way he wanted to. Camacho throwing the combos for the camera. And Julian Prado still looks to be like he's in a little bit of trouble. You know, one thing I wanted to mention that Giuliano Prado training with Team Oyama, obviously calling Oyama an incredible Muay Thai trainer. However, sometimes when Jiu-Jitsu fighters who've trained in wrestling and grappling all their life attempt to learn Muay Thai, when it comes down to it in the cage, they tend to uh, stray away from their Muay Thai training. And sometimes it just, it's hard to teach someone who's grappled all their life how to strike if they didn't start with striking. Well, it's hard for them to rush in and mix it up with people that have been doing it for a long time. The replay. There. Prado throwing a big right, but Camacho answering with that uppercut and a hook to finish it off. And just one more for good measure on the ground. One more angle there. The left hook connected, and bam. Two more shots. And he's lights out, folks. You know, it was really the uppercut that did it, as you see Joe Camacho celebrating. celebrating. <laughs> Another angle here for the celebration of Camacho's victory. And uh, he looks to be a contender at that light weight class there. You know, at the time of the knockout, Juliano Prado was really throwing a, a good overhand right that did land on Joe Camacho, however. Camacho happened to get the better of that exchange. It really could have gone either way. You know, a good boxer knows that a fighter is most vulnerable when he's throwing his own punches. And Camacho was able to capitalize that tonight against Prado. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 42 seconds of the first round, your winner by knockout, JC, plenty of skills, Joe Camacho! And now for our next event. First, out of the blue corner, from Rancho Cucamonga, California, he fights with bad intentions. He stands 5 feet 11. He weighed in at 205 pounds. Please welcome Tony Patera. So Tony Patera coming from bad intentions and millennia jiu-jitsu. He's originally from Santa Maria, California. He's 37 years old and now resides in Rancho Cucamonga. He does train with John Alessio as well as Javier Vasquez. So you can imagine that he's a very well-rounded fighter. And I'll tell you what, he looks like he's in great shape right now. You know, one of his first fights was against Vanderlei Silva down in Brazil. So he has experienced all kinds of fighters in his well, Tony Patera jumping in the ring with Vanderlei Silva, I'd say uh, after that, there's really no one out there you can be scared of if you live through that one. I'll have to agree, but he's going to have to take on a guy who, like Vanderlei, in all of his last few fights, has been knocking everyone out in West Coast. And his opponent, 
out of the red corner. He fights out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. He fights with team body shots. He stands six feet one and weighed in at 210 pounds. Please welcome Wes Combs. Wes Combs coming out in his traditional fatigue. Like, like we said, he's also from Rancho Cucamonga, California, where he trains with the Body Shots team. He's fighting style, he's freestyle. His current trainer is William Sirapai, who fought earlier tonight. His previous trainer fighting later on the card, Thomas the Wild Man Denny. He was a high school wrestler, 6'1", 210 pounds, and he's got a, won his last three fights all by knockout. West Combs looking very, very confident coming into this fight with Tony Patera. Right right Tony, right here. 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 Undefeated at 5-0. Tony Patera, 37, 5'11", 203 pounds, with a record of 6-2-0. Herb Dean's going to start him. You ready? Let's do it. And I'm really interested to see how Patera comes back. He hasn't fought in quite some time. And there you see the knockout power. Combs lands a mean right hand right on the chin of Patera. Good kick by Combs there, landed to the midsection of Patera. This really has the makings of a great match tonight. Both these fighters look content to stay on their feet. Patera lands a leg kick and Combs comes back with two of his own. Make that three. Patera with the underhooks, will he get the takedown on Wes Combs? Oh, Wes pummeling and pushing Patera towards the cage. A couple of shots in the midsection with knees by both fighters. But Patera lands one that seemed to count there. Overhand left and right, combinations of punches from West Coast, Patera oh, answering. He hit him right on the chin, and that has been his money shot. He has knocked out all of his last few opponents, and it looks like he's on his way to getting another knockout victory. Patera was in trouble, it looks like he didn't regain his composure, looking for the hill hook now. He weathered the storm, ate a big right, dazed for a moment. Combs heavy-handed. West Combs exactly where he would like to be. With his opponent up against the fence, raining down those strikes. This looks like trouble for Patera. Combs ends the fight. It's another TKO. And that is his fourth one so far here in the cage. Crowd cheering for Combs. West Combs coming in, what he doing what he wanted to do, finishing the fight very quickly. Referee stopping the fight after the knockout. And you can see Patera. Still in a bad way on his back. He does have cuts on his eyes. Well, I'll tell you what, I've seen his last few fights and they were against opponents that I wouldn't say are at the same level of Patera. But I guess the knockouts haven't been a fluke. West Combs keeping the string alive against his opponent, Tony Patera. Let's look at the replay. Here comes the punch combination. Patera gets a couple of shots in there, but eats the left hook across the chin. That was the first time he went down. Once he was there on his back, he did go for the hill hook, but it wasn't enough. West Combs defending and continuing to deliver those big rights to the chin of Tony Patera.
I am impressed by Wes Combs. Wes Combs looking better all the time. He's definitely going to be a force in the light heavyweight division. <laughs> Could there be possibly a matchup with Jeremy Horn in the future, our light heavyweight champion? I'm not sure. West Coast is definitely in the picture. These things are getting hot here in King of the Cage. Lots of great fighters. seconds of the first round, your winner by knockout, Wes Combs. There you have it, the official word. Wes Combs, your winner here in the first round. from Riverside, California. He fights with Lake Elsinore Fight Crew. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 204 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe Crilly. Here he is, like you heard, from Lake Elsinore, California. With a two and one record, his last fight being a loss to the hands of Art Santori from Millennia Jiu-Jitsu at our last pay-per-view show in Las Vegas. And Joe Crilly has really been something of a local standout here in Southern California. Definitely filling the seats here at Saboba Casino is Joe Crilly. And his opponent hails from Hemet, California. He fights with a Griffin fighting system. He stands five feet seven inches tall and weighs in at 205 pounds. Please welcome Javier Casio. Here he comes, Javier Casio, five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 204, fighting originally from San Diego, California, now out of Hemet, California. His fighting style, he says it's Greco-Roman, Jet Kundo, Muay Thai, and Jiu-Jitsu has an MMA record of one and one. He was a high school and Marine Corps wrestler. And he's going to be in for a fight tonight here against Joe Brooke. years old, 5'7", 204 pounds with a record of 1-1. One one. Joe Curley, 29, 6 feet tall, 205 pounds with a record of 2-1. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Here we are, Joe Curley, Javier Casio. Joe throws a jab, Casio comes back with a three-punch combination, lands over the top right, and then eats a big right hand from from Curley, who's pounding him. 
Palacio trying to attempt a leg submission, it looks like he's going to go for. Should have to watch out. Curley's loading up that hand. Curley in control on top in the guard of Javier Casio. Landing several shots. Looks like he's already cut the eye of Javier Casio. Couple of good shots by Curley. And there's a big cut open. Looks like on the left eye of Casio. A lot of blood already. Doctor going to go ahead and take a look at the eye of Javier Casio. Joe Curley looks kind of composed. Well, you can hear the doctor say he'll let Javier go one more time. But I'm sure he will be keeping a very close eye on the cut. Okay, guys, let's go. They're going to go at it once again. Cecil Peoples about to restart the action after the doctor checked the cut here. And they get the cage sealed up. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go. Javier Casio, Joe Curley at it once again. The doctor okay and Javier to continue. Curley looking to open that cut even more. Really just cut straight forward the whole time. Casio on four. Curley lets him out. All right, let's go. I think Curley's going to go for the knockout standing. Good punch by Curley there. Curley Curley right stop. Right hand. Cecil people stopping the fight. Cecil people stopping the action here. Curley gets another win at Cerro Casino. One of the fan favorites here at Saboba. Joe Curley looking no worse for the wear as we look at the replay. Combination after combination from Joe Curley landing on Javier Casio. That was the first left hook that put him down. We took a look at that right hand that connected on the jaw and another big right hand that dropped him to one knee. Cecil people seen enough at that point. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute, 27 seconds of the first round, your winner. Joe Next event, first out of the blue corner, he fights out of Gainesville, Florida. He fights with the F2 submission fight team. He stands six feet tall. He weighs in at 170 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jason Dolder. <laughs> All right, from Fort Dodge, Iowa, Jason Dolder, now fighting out of Gainesville, Florida. His style is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He does maintain a mixed martial art record of 3-0. and oh. Currently trains with Mike Lee, also has a background in high school wrestling.
Well, Jason Gold is a fighter out of the F2 Arena in Gainesville, Florida. Put together some impressive victories. He's fought here and been victorious, the king of the cage in the past. I believe he was on a fight card that you and I watched together in St. Pete, Florida. Yeah, Jason Dolder looking very, very cut. Looks to be in great shape for this fight here in King of the Cage. And his opponent fights out of Hesperia, California. He fights with Team Oyama and Team Wildman. He stands 5 feet 9. He weighed in at 170 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas the Wildman Denny! Well, this is him, folks, the Wildman, one of the biggest local draws here. He's got a sign that says, in memory of 911. He's fighting out of Tuscan, California. His fighting style is Valley Tudo. His mixed martial arts record, 23-8-0. Fighting with Team Oyama and Team Wildman. He was his trainer as Colin Oyama, previous MMA trainer Giuliano Prado. And he's currently the fight zone middleweight champion. Had an impressive win over a tough fighter from Phoenix, Kyle Breeze, in his last outing here at King of the Cage. And he has an entourage of about 75 people. And probably always the coolest hairdo in mixed martial arts. Thomas Denny. Different design every time. Sporting the stars and stripes, the stars and bars of the United States of America. All right, gentlemen, you guys support. Any questions? Okay, follow my instructions at all times. I'm gonna stay out of your way, let you do what you came here to do. When I give the instructions, come out ready to fight. Let's go. Here we are, the tail of the tape. Thomas Denny, the wild man, 32 years old, five foot nine, 170 pounds. A record of 23 and 8. Jason Dolder, 25 years old, 5 foot 11, the same weight, 170, undefeated at 3 and 0. Irv Great Dean's fight. gonna start him. Great fight. Let's do it. But for Dolder to do powerful slams, that's what he's done in the past. Jason Dolder, only three fights on his record, but he will be a game opponent for the wild man. Goes right there for the takedown right away. Usually brings him up really high, though. The wild man stand up, escaping from the fence. Dolder gives him a knee to the body, and now the wild man pushing Dolder against the cage. These fighters fighting for position in that stand up clinch. Looks like the wild man does have the underhooks. Delivering those Muay Thai knees to the thighs of Jason Dolder. Dolder pops a couple of short pans over the top of the ear, then he, and he answers back with one of his own. Well, it looks like there was a groin shot here. Herb being a little confused about what had happened there. You can hear Crazy Horse Charles Bennett in the corner. Okay. You ready to go? Take a few more minutes. You ready? All right. You ready? Fight. Wild man's ready. Dolder letting him know it wasn't intentional. Thomas Denny obviously knows that. Oh, right hand by Jason Dolder. Drops Denny. Thomas Denny ate a big one right there. And it stunned him. He's on his back. Dolder delivering more rights to the face of the wild man. And the wild man attempting to get his guard back here. Tries to sweep to a heel hook. Oh! And I thought he had it, but Dolder reverses position. He comes out with side top. Wild man pulled that out of the back of his pocket. Didn't expect to see that going for the heel hook. And you know, wild man can do a little bit of everything. Now you see the man, Joe Stevenson, who beat the wild man, our last King of the Cage pay-per-view, in the corner of Jason Dolder. And Thomas Denny gets out of trouble, frees his head, and now he's in a position where Jason Dolder could receive a lot of damage here. Yeah, Thomas Denny right there with the side mount. 
showing that experience, being patient, passing the guard. Full mount now on Jason Dolder. And Dolder's not answering back. Referee stops the bout. Thomas, the wild man, Denny, victorious with punches from the mount position. Jason Dolder doesn't look too happy about the stoppage. Well, I think he thought it was a little bit early. It looked like he was getting ready to stand up. You know, the rules in mixed martial arts do state that a fighter must intelligently defend himself. You can't wait. Unfortunately for Jason Dolder, he took too long. Herb Dean has seen enough damage. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 22 seconds of the first round, your winner, Thomas the Wild Man Denny. You heard it, the official word in the first round. Check out the replay. Wild Man defending the jab, the oh. shot, eating a big right up there from the overhand right. And just when you thought Jason Dolder was in control, the wild man comes back, gets the full mount position, and finishes the fight with punches from the mount. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this bout is for the 145 pound King of the Cage World Championship. First, the challenger out of Werner, California. He fights with Team Mash. He stands five feet eight. He weighed in at 145 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Greg Mayer. All right, Team Nash is Greg Mayer. He is a former Division I wrestler. Both of his wins coming at a, in a very ferocious fashion, defeating Balquatch and Jamal Perkins, two excellent fighters at this weight category. So Greg Mayer with only two fights going for that title, but he does have the credentials to deserve it. Heavy-handed fighter and great submission too. And now, out of the red corner, he comes from Rosemead, California. He's with the New Breed Jiu-Jitsu and Valencia Freestyle Fighting. He stands five feet three. He weighed in at 140 pounds. He is your current 145 pound King of the Cage champion, Charlie Valencia. Charlie Valencia, one of the toughest 145 pounders out there and the current champion. Fighting out of Rosemead, California, now uh, Santa Fe Springs, California. His style is wrestling. His mixed martial arts record is eight wins, no losses. So something's got to give tonight two undefeated guys. Now training with New Breed Jiu-Jitsu at Valencia Freestyle Academy. His current MMA trainer, John Ramirez and John Owano. He has titles as the King of the Cage Featherweight Champion, College State Wrestling Champion, and Fresno State University. All right, I went over the rules with both of you in our dressing room. You say you understand the rules, I expect a good, clean fight. I expect you to protect yourself at all times. I expect you to listen for my commands at all times. Touch him up, this is a three-rounder. Here's the tale of the tape. Charlie Valencia, your champion, 29 years old, 5'3", 145 pounds, 8-0. Greg Mayer, 27, five foot seven, the same weight, 145, and he's two and zero. Ready? Ready? 
fight. The dog starts him. Don't blink in this one, folks. Could be over real quick. Well, Charlie Valencia shooting right away on the wrestler, Greg Mayer. We'll see if we see a big slam that Greg Mayer is known for. Big knee there by Valencia to the midsection of Mayer. I would imagine with both these skilled grapplers, we're going to see a lot of technical grappling. You see the strength that Mayer has, clinching and pushing Valencia back. Good uppercut by Valencia. Didn't connect, though. This is a fight, folks. Title on the line. Oh, big punch by Valencia. And a drive shot. Picks the ankle and takes Valencia down. Greg Mayer on top. But he's in trouble. His head is stuck. He does have the forearm across the neck of Charlie Valencia, though, trying to push out. Out into the midsection. Doesn't look like he wants to quit, but it looks like it's in there deep. He might be put to sleep. Greg Mayer's got to be careful. He's got to take his time, get his breath, and pull his head out of the guilty. Scorer's yelling rib chest, but... You know, it's, it's always hard to tell from this position. Is the fighter borderline ready to pass out, or is he trying to regain Well, it looks like he's taking a couple steps here, so I think he's okay. You can hear the referee saying, let me know if you went out. Now, is, now is, is Greg Mayer, is he playing possum and letting Charlie Valencia waste his strength? You know, one of the first things they teach you in grappling is if you don't have the submission, don't hold on to it for too long because you're going to waste your strength, and that's what you're going to need later on. It looks to me like Greg Mayer's free. Greg Mayer appears to be just fine. Charlie Valencia. Good sidekick from the ground. Mayer comes forward. Mayer trying to crawl right into a triangle almost. And I knew this one was going to be a war. You can't kick him. Mayer ha is in trouble. Valencia has a triangle sunk. Is Mayer going to be able to escape it? Doesn't have the arm across though. Mayer needs to turn. Get his head out from in between those legs. Now this type of choke is cutting off the blood circulation to the brain. It's not cutting off the oxygen. So at some times... Well, he doesn't have the full triangle right now. He's in position. Mayor safer now, just in the full guard of Valencia. Mayor doing a good job of defending against the great submission skills of Charlie Valencia. Mayor up, Mayor. two Mayor overhand right. To the top. Remember, this is a three-round fight, each round being five minutes for the 145-pound title. Valencia looks real patient, even in his guard. Mayor looking to take Valencia to the fence. Valencia doing a good job at avoiding being trapped. Greg Mayer not able to make anything happen at this point. On top, in the guard of Charlie Valencia. Starting to throw those punches, nothing really connecting. This is a position where Greg Mayer could even end with the submission here. Torquing on the neck of Valencia. Looking for a neck crank is Greg Mayer from the top. Looks like it could be trouble. Wow, Greg Mayer does look. At Valencia, there seems to be some blood on his head. I'm not sure if it's coming from the eyebrow. The challenger, Greg Mayer, looking good thus far against Charlie Valencia, Chris. Oh, absolutely. These guys, it's hard to say who would do what in this fight, but now you see Valencia escaped out of that situation. And now he's the one in control doing all the damage right now. Remember, Greg Mayer 
is oh. Great first round. Back and forth. I'll tell you what, I hate to be a judge in a round like that. I'm not sure who won that one. A very evenly matched first round. The first of three for this featherweight title. 145 pound belt on the line. Okay. Charlie Valencia, comic composed off his back. Hey, 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 smart, hey, listen, get, get your head together, get your head together, hey, good hands, in and out, in and out, you're fine, hey, big hands, big hands, you're fine, huh, you're fine, you're fine, hey, only on the floor, okay, you're fine, hey, hands up, okay, get your head together right now, you're fine, you, you want that? Let's take a look at what happened here in round one, there's the kick to the head from Valencia underneath, and a good heel to the face of Greg Mayer. On a legal kick, however, uh, as we head into the second round, that illegal kick was unintentional, according to Doc <gasps> Hamilton. Well, the first kick, the round kick to the head was perfectly legal. It was the heel to the face. There's a big knee by Valencia to the body. Oh, the and second one. It lands to the head this time. Mayor's oh! Forward. Greg Mayer walked right into that slam. Huge slam. All right, well, we saw Greg Mayer on top in the guard of Charlie Valencia, the champion. Now it's the other way around here in the second round. What will the champion do with the position? Charlie Valencia bringing Greg Mayer over to his corner right in front of his trainers where he can listen to the instructions and find a way to finish the fight. Here comes Valencia, and he attempts a submission. Greg Mayer needs to step out of that. And it looks like Mayer is going to be okay. How long will Charlie Valencia hold on to the foot of Greg Mayer? Will he get that heel hook? A great angle right there, Chris. Oh, he looks close to finishing the move, too. Greg Mayer has really got to look out of trouble here. Greg Mayer needs to take that right foot and push on the behind of the champion, Charlie Valencia. He can't oh, wait. That's it. Valencia finishes it. Mayer has nothing to do. He has to tap. Those two fighters exhausted, laying on the floor in the cage. He tapped, he tapped. Neither wanted to get up. The champion, the first one to his feet, looking exhausted after his second round submission victory over a great oh, challenger, man, Greg Mayer. No, no, no. I, 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 oh, I thought you said that. As I was going to say, you know, Greg Mayer, a great wrestler, a great fighter, but you cannot wait to escape a submission, especially one like the heel hook, where he's just giving a guy like Char Charlie Valencia the opportunity to reposition himself and, and make the submission after perfect. After one minute, 43 seconds of the second round, your winner, and still the 145 pound Pina Cage champion, Charlie Valencia. And like you're saying, you know, one of the things, he, he has a wrestling shoe. Take a look at the replay here when he finishes that. Wrestling shoe is a big factor in being able to finish those submissions. That's true that, you know, the wrestling shoe is, is almost like a handle for that heel hook because a, tr a normal foot would be all sweaty and it'd be easy to slip out and pull your foot out. But that shoe is dry and easy to hold onto and easy to grip. Well, the champion took advantage of it tonight and that's why he still got the belt wrapped around his waist, even if it's upside down right here. For our next event, first out of the blue corner, 
He fights out of Costa Mesa, California. He fights with Bob White's karate and outcast fight gear. He stands six feet two. He weighed in at 205 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Newton. All right, Jeff Newton, one of the most incredibly exciting karate style fighters I've ever seen. You know, besides Tony Carter, Jeff Newton is the only fighter I've ever seen to make karate work in true mixed martial arts. He uses those lead high kicks, all kinds of different crazy tricks. Jeff Newton also has the grappling skills training with Todd Medina and some other great grapplers like Art Santori right behind him. Last fight here at Sonoma, he threw a lot of kicks, all kinds, lead front kicks, back kicks, spinning kicks, you name it, if it was a kick, he threw it. And his opponent fights out of Tarabella, California. He fights with Team Rampage. He stands six feet two and weighs in at 200 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Dustin Arden. Justin Arden fighting out of Terra Bella, California, right out of the Porterville area. For those of you that aren't familiar with the, the thriving metropolis of Terra Bella, he's a 200 pounder with heavy hands. And I've seen him big knockouts. He comes swinging hard. And, uh, you know, both of these guys are prone to stand up fighting. So he's been training mixed martial arts about six months. His favorite technique is striking. His goals in this sport is to achieve the highest position that he can, whether it's a belt or a title. And uh, he hopes that his opponent's going to bring it tonight. How we doing, buddy? Pretty good. My piece. Hey, Gronk, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Okay. All right, good luck now. See, so people's hesitant to touch the cup area of Dustin Arden. Okay, but Dustin Arden, very polite, offering to let him check. Come here, I want you to listen to me now. When I tell you, fight's over. Stop hitting, stop kicking. That means somebody either tapped out or passed out. Everybody understand? All right, let's have a good one, guys. All right, the tail of the tape. Dustin Arden, 27 years old, 6'2", 200 pounds. He's undefeated. Now Jeff Newton, 36 years old, 6'2", 205 pounds. He's 2 and 1. Are you ready? Are you ready? Look at Jeff Let's Newton in his karate stance right off the bat. Look for those high kicks. And Newton definitely throws him. He throws a reverse kick, a leaping front kick, and Arden comes swinging right at him. Now Newton goes for a single leg trip, but a Arden sprawl there by Arden. A nice sprawl by Arden. Arden threw a couple of punches to the midsection. Oh, an uppercut that almost took Newton's head off. Arden swinging for the fences right there. Jeff oh. Newton narrowly missing a high kick. Oh, oh. there it comes. Arden came in wildly. Newton switched levels. Picked him up and dumped him. And you gotta love, he almost took his head off with the karate kick earlier. Dustin and Arden almost took his head off with a crazy right hand. Dustin Arden was holding on to the guillotine for a second. To no avail now. Jeff Newton in the full mount, although his arms are tied up, I can imagine. He's only gonna pull his arms out and go to town. Dustin Arden, will Dustin be able to escape or survive? We have yet to see. shot from the mount, but Arden able to escape. Great escape by Dustin Arden. He goes inside the guard, Newton, and he's gonna have to watch out for those long legs. Oh, <laughs> big right hand by Dustin Arden. Now Arden on top still. And Arden is a fighter. Standing menacingly over Jeff Newton. He comes to bring it. He has Newton trapped up against the fence. Not a position that a karate fighter would want to be in, but Newton does have grappling skills. Like I mentioned, training with Tom Medina and also the guys at Millennia Jiu-Jitsu. Romy, Javier Vasquez, Art Santori. All great grapplers that have helped out Jeff Newton. Arden now taking a breath. Looks like he slowed down for the first time in the fight. Kick his leg, kick his leg. 
Arden with the leg kicks as well. <laughs> and now the kicks are coming from Dustin Arden. Arden letting him get back to his feet, rushing in on Jeff Newton. Big right hands by Dustin Arden connected. We got a serious fight on our hands here. Look at them staring down. For the southpaw, Jack Newton. Another good shot by Newton, just misses. Dustin Arden is exciting, oh. going for it. 80 punches and kicks, and he loves it. Jeff Newton landed a big kick there. Arden not quite sure what to make, where the where the kicks and punches are coming from, but he eats a leg kick there, right to the head. He, does, he may not know where the where the kicks and punches are coming from, but he sure knows where they're going. Well, he comes back and he throws heavy hands. Oh, Arden looking gassed. Newton keeping the movement, keeping his distance. Newton at this point using very good strategy on Dustin Arden. Arden dancing around a little bit. Possibly looking to distract Jeff Newton. Jeff landed a good kick to the body. Arden still trying to take his head off. Oh, and a jumping knee that connects. I think the shots to the body have uh, definitely affected Dustin Arden. Now a right hand when Arden walks forward. Look at this oh, duel. an axe kick. Arden smiling all the while. <laughs> This is a great fight. Dustin Arden not, not offering much of a defense to the leg kick. And like I told you, he threw every kick in the, kick in the book last time. And he's throwing oh, it again tonight. Big left and a oh, knee. Dustin Arden losing his mouthpiece. I know. Cecil Peoples getting all over to grab that mouthpiece. Yeah, look at Dustin Arden. Nose bloodied, eyes swollen, and he's ready for Jeff Newton. Jeff Newton now about to take his back. Is this, could, be a, could this be a standing rear naked? It was. End of the fight. Newton gets a standing choke. Get him the next time. Great action here. Cecil people tells him you'll get him the next time. Dustin Arden throwing a, a punch to the body after the fight was stopped. See some people offering consolation saying they'll get him the next time. Well, Dustin Arden put up a great fight in the first round. It looked like he might have, he was about to win, but Newton came back with those crazy karate kicks. See promoter Cherry Trevilcock there with the future superstar okay, in our sport, okay. Jeff Newton. Ladies and gentlemen, after four minutes, 41 seconds of the first round, your winner, Jeff Newton. <laughs> Let's take a look at the replay. Newton going for the flying knee. Dustin turning around, giving up the back and the rear naked choke to Jeff Newton. A very quick tap. Jeff Newton looking excited. Arms up in victory. And now it's time for our first of two main events. This bout is for the 185 pound King of the Cage World Championship. First, the challenger out of Detroit, Michigan, 
He fights with the Fight Mash team. He stands five feet 11. He weighed in at 200 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James Lee. James Lee, the challenger, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan. His fighting style, he says street fighting. He's got a mixed martial arts record of 12 wins and one losses. He's the current Gladiator Challenge title holder. He's self-trained. He's got a boxing coach with him tonight, Mikhail Caldwell, from the Kronk Gym in Detroit. He's been fighting with 18 years of wrestling, 12 years of kickboxing, 11 years of boxing, and about 11 years of jujitsu. Favorite technique is the left cross. And I'm telling you, he looks in better shape than I've seen him for any fight so far. And now, out of the red corner, he hails from San Diego, California. He trains with City Boxing. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 200 pounds. He's the Abu Dhabi Absolute Champion and the 185 pound King of the Kings World Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Lister. Here he comes, Dean Lister, sporting the traditional jujitsu gi. He is a brown belt, but I, his skills definitely go beyond a brown belt. He was the winner of the absolute division in the Abu Dhabi Championships in Rio, Brazil this year. And then you look at some of his training partners, Brent Stuchelik, as well as Tito Ortiz. Dean Lister has been training down to City Boxing down there. Also, he is a Sambo champion. Wearing the traditional fight board shorts, only tighter. Dean looking in great shape. Two impressive cornermen, Tito Ortiz and Hoist Gracie. Quite a combination right there, Tito and Hoist. Nice work. Protect yourself at all times. Listen for my command at all times. We got three rounds. Touch them up. The tail of the tape, the champion, Dean Lister, 27 years old, six feet tall, 195 pounds, a record of six and one. James Lee, 29, five foot eleven, the same weight, 195 pounds. He's 12 and one. This could be one of Dean Lister's biggest challenges yet, Chris. Ready? Ready? Do it! Here we go, the middleweight championship of King of the Cage. James Lee coming forward with the jab. He said that he had a plan to beat Lister. Let's see if he can make it happen here tonight. Good sprawl there from James. You know, with all that boxing training that James Lee has, you would think the superior grappler would be Dean Lister, that he would want to take it to the ground, where he has less of a chance of taking the KO punch. Where Lister is so dangerous, he finishes so many people at so many times. When yeah, they go into his guard. Dean is no slouch from his back. You know, and I'm surprised to see James Lee wearing wrestling shoes against somebody like Dean Lister that has finished a lot of fights with heel hooks and ankle locks. Lister gonna go for the takedown here against the cage. Hold on to your hats, we might see a big one. He picks him up high, dumps him. James doing a good job of using that fence to climb back to his feet. He's doing the right thing now because he was almost in a position to give up his back. Lister comes forward, knee to the head. Lee swims underneath. Fighters clinching up against the fence. Dean Lister leaning in on James Lee. James Lee is going to finish that double again. Dean going to try to stand him up. Another takedown. Big takedown by Lister. Straight into the side mount. Dean Lister so dangerous on the ground. This is his realm. to say that if you're his opponent you do not want to be on the ground 
with yeah. the Abu Dhabi world champion. Yeah, James Lee has no time to mess around at this point. He needs to get back to his feet, or at least back on top. Lister gets the mount position. Lee attempts to escape in an armbar position by Lister now. He escapes out in trouble. Lister, such a smooth grappler. You're always in trouble just when you think you escape. Well, so many possibilities right here for, for Dean Lister to finish the fight on James Lee. Top it out right there to the armbar. That's it. Dean Lister remains champion. Wow. So technical on the ground. It, it almost looked like Dean Lister had his choice of submissions right there. No stopping this guy on the ground. Dean Lister's going to hold on to that belt for a long time. Dean Lister being congratulated. Very quick to shake the hand of James Lee after he beat him. A great sportsman is Dean Lister. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 41 seconds of the first round, your winner, and still King of the Cage, 185 pound world champion, Dean Lister. I mean, this guy is just a proved leap that bounce. Here we come with the replay. Show Dean Lister congratulate James Lee after the fight. But beforehand, we saw a couple slams. Here's one right here, straight to his back. And passing the guard. Dean Lister would soon get the mount and go for the submissions. Possibly the arm bar, possibly the triangle. And he finally pulls off the arm bar on James Lee. pound king of the cage world championship first out of bc canada he fights with bad intentions and millennia jiu-jitsu he stands five feet ten he weighed in at 170 pounds he is the current super fight champion john alicio Bringing with him the American and Canadian flag, John the Natural Alessio. All kinds of skills, both on the ground and on his feet. John Alessio taking this fight very serious. He is the super fight champion, as we said earlier. John does have a couple pro boxing bouts in the works. Been training a lot of boxing as of late. However, keeping his grappling on top with the Millennia Jiu Jitsu crew. He's ready for this fight to be stand up, on the ground, and everywhere in between. Former King of the Cage, lightweight champion Javier Vasquez in his corner. crowd here tonight to watch this main event with John Alessio taking on Ronald Judd. This is the fight we've all been waiting for. The welterweight championship fight. Fighting out of Honolulu, Hawaii. He fights with Team Machine Gun. 
He stands five feet 11. He weighs in at 170 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, the current King of the Cage, 170 pound world champion, the machine gun, Ronald John. Here he comes, folks, the current champion, Ronald the Machine Gun Jun. Five feet, 11 inches tall, 170 pounds, fighting out of Honolulu, Hawaii. His fighting style, he says freestyle, he's got a big record. 27 wins, six losses, and two draws. He's fighting out of the 808 Fight Factory, that's the name of his gym. His current trainer and manager is Kai Kamaka, and he's got a whole lot of titles, including the King of the Cage, title here in the middleweight division. Ronald Dunn looking to make everyone out there in the 808 state proud. A lot of pride, a lot of very proud fighters come out of this, out of that state. And if you don't know what 808 stands for, that's the area code for calling Hawaii folks. Two specimens, both these guys look like they're in phenomenal shape. It's really incredible to think both these guys make that 170 pound weight. You know, at, at this point, a, a day after the weigh-in, they both must be well over 180 pounds. I know John Alessio told me he was at 185 pounds three or four hours after his weigh-in. Okay, we went on the world, the world meeting. Any questions? All right, gentlemen, follow my instructions at all times. I'm gonna stay out of your way, let you do what you came to do. Come out ready to fight at the bell. The main event, the tail of the tape, Ronald Judd, 32, 5 foot 11, 170 pounds, 27, 6 and 2, while John Alessio is 24 years old, 5 foot 10, the same weight, 170 pounds, 16, 6 and 0. Oh. This is the welterweight championship. Herb Dean's gonna start him in a moment. You ready to fight? You ready to fight? Let's do it. Here we go, King of the Cage Let's Renegade, the main right event. Alessio's boxing coach earlier today was boasting that nobody can hit one this guy standing down. on his feet. But the machine gun, he throws some fast hands of his own. Good double jab by Alessio, connects on the second one. This fight has the potential to be over at any moment. The striking skills of both of these fighters is unbelievable. Lead uppercut by Jim. Nice inside low kick from John Alessio to the lead leg of Ronald Jun, the champion. These fighters sizing each other up but not waiting too long. Left hook thrown by Jun as Alessio steps forward. Good right hand by Alessio coming forward, but then a counter by Jun. Alessio Kamini passed that jab with the right to follow it. Good right hand by Alessio. Looks like Jun was able to get out of the way though. The glancing strike to the groin of John Alessio. Able to continue. And Jun is really counter-punching well. Every time Alessio steps forward, he throws either an uppercut or a left hook. Now an inside leg kick while Alessio steps forward. A very, very technical fight thus far. A low kick delivered from Ronald Jun to the leg of John Alessio. Jun is looking really calm and composed here, like the way a champion should. A great main event fight. These two fighters very evenly matched on their feet thus far. Great takedown by John Alessio, now with great side position. So, our champion Ronald Judd over committing on the punch. The natural taking advantage of it, getting the takedown. Oh, we have to watch out, that looks really tight. John Alessio looking to pass the guard. However, Ronald Judd maintaining control. From his back. Listen to the champion's corner asking him to elbow from the bottom. 
to the head of the natural, John Alessio. And Jude is listening to his corner. He popped a couple of short elbows in there. And a quick right hand. Jude opening up his guard. But Alessio's got him back against the cage now, which could be trouble. The head's got nowhere to go when it's gonna hit. Good oh. shots by Alessio. The champion taking two shots to the chin. We've seen Alessio win here. He won the super fight title, knocking out Chris Brennan. Ronald John maintaining composure from his back, even though he had, took a couple shots there. Looks to be calm and collected thus far. Now you'll notice John Alessio, a great fighter, and he's not going to let this advantage go by the wayside. He will not, oh, great left forearms, elbows right there. As I was saying, John Alessio doesn't want to let this go by the wayside, taking advantage of that superior position. Herb Dean, stopping the fight, bringing it back to their feet. Remember, this is a three-round fight for the welterweight title. Jun coming forward aggressively now. First round very evenly matched. John Alessio possibly with the advantage. He did have the takedown. The stand-up being relatively even thus far. A good knee to the body, though. And look at another takedown from John Alessio. Another great takedown. And Alessio back on top. And he was able to land some punishing blows earlier while he had that top position. A good left, standing back up, getting to his feet. Now coming back down on top. I have to say, so far, standing up, the two fighters have been about even. But on the ground, Alessio has done enough damage, in my opinion, to win the round. The challenger, doing good thus far here in the first round. Good job, John. A great first round for our main event here at King of the Cage Renegade, Chris. John Alessio bringing it to the champion. Owned by Javier Vasquez, Millennia Jiu Jitsu. Former KOTC 155 pound champion. Hands down, there you go. Hey, tell him, tell him to be first. John, deep breath. Still up, John. Still up while we talk. Still up while we talk. Breathe, breathe, yes. John Alessio looking good thus far. Breathing very calmly. Let me get some more. Uh, Vaseline. Vaseline on that. Huh? Get some more Vaseline there. Hey, nose on the bridge's nose. John, be first. Breathe. What's up, Al? Listen, listen. Hey, I know. I'll call you back. Round number two about to get underway here in our main and final fight of the night, King of the Cage, Ronald the Machine Gun Jun taking on John the Natural Alessio. Take a little bit of extra time to possibly clean up the floor of the cage. Maybe some water spilled in one of the corners possibly. I'll tell you what, it was a hot day earlier, but now it's a cool, crisp Southern California. Beautiful night here where these guys are fighting. That's a normal. Here are the second round Ready? of our title fight. Both these fighters look great on their feet, Chris. Yeah, so far I don't know if anybody's got an advantage standing up. Jun's been able to do well with the counter punching when Alessio comes forward. A couple of them both landed kicks. Jun landed a good kick in the first round. But you see that left hook as as um, Alessio comes in straight forward, not cutting and punching with angles. Yeah, and the technique is just bursting from these fighters. You can see great technique and style on their feet. Fighters getting a little antsy, looking to land a blow. John Alessio controlling the center of the ring there Good for a jab, moment. Step forward by Jim there, the champ. In the knee, in the knee, in the knee. Exchange in the knee. Alessio comes forward with a double jab. Still squared up a little bit though. 
Jin leads with the right hand. Alessio's going to have to change his game of attack, and this is going to go for a takedown again. You know, even good shot wow. fired by the machine gun, and you saw how quickly he was able to unload, hence the nickname. Yeah, definitely letting the hands go. John Alessio getting the takedown once again, even with all that boxing training that he's been doing lately. Ronald Jun seems to be more dangerous on his feet thus far in the fight, but John Alessio is able to reach in his back pocket and get that takedown. Almost easily, three times now on the fight, Chris. Relatively easily. The first takedown was really impressive. But uh, I think Jim was starting to get a little bit better in the stand-up. Not afraid of what Alessio's coming forward with. He's coming straight at him. Jim being a great counterfighter. And then teeing off as Alessio's on the defense. Alessio trying to pass the guard of Ronald Jun, the champion on his back, in a precarious position, but escaping. Good movement by Jun, but now Alessio taking the back. Oh, he drops down for submission attempt. Lands a good shot from his guard. A great shot from the back. And another elbow from the side of the head of Alessio. Ronald Dunn avoided a what could have possibly been a big takedown by diving for that knee bar. Good guard passing work by Alessio there. With the side mount, the natural John Alessio, our challenger, on top once again. Very good possibility. He won that first round with the takedowns and the control on the ground, looking to do the same here. John Alessio fighting a very, very good fight, very strategic, being very patient, controlling Ronald John on the ground, doing what he needs to do to win the rounds. And at this point, Ronald John is expending a lot of energy trying to escape this guillotine and this position on his back. Alessio able to land a couple of shots to the body with the knees there. No fighter able to achieve much of anything at that point. Irv Deep standing him back up. Now, will Ronald Jun make John Alessio pay? Good front kick by Alessio there. He shoots low again. He's got a single, but can he finish it? Jun sprawling back. Able to get his leg down. Both these fighters extremely strong for their weight division. John Alessio looking to get the takedown up against the fence. Great leg sweep right there. Leg trip. Alessio on top once again, controlling the match at this point. Alessio, good control from on top, but so far he hasn't been able to really unleash a barrage of damaging strikes. Yeah, not able to capitalize on these takedowns. However, they are scoring points in the minds of the judges. Ten seconds left in the round. The second of our welterweight title fight. And this round two comes to a close. Unless you try to get a few last licks there. He's looking to right position. We gotta push it. Well, John Alessio fighting extremely smart, doing what he needs to do to win the fight. I would hey, have to say that Ronald Jun is in the hole. He's looking to right out position. Okay. If anything, we need to get on top of this round and just beat the living daylights out of him. Okay. That's all he's gonna do. He's looking to right position. He's using the exchange to get the takedown and ride the timer. He's not gonna fight you. So you gotta take the fight to him. Kind of even, we need a big round, okay? We need a big round. All he did was ride out the first two rounds, okay? Good. Okay? Hey, all he's looking to do is exchange, get the takedown, and lie there. That's all, okay? He's gonna try and push his position up to get the takedown, and that's it. Make him push. 
push him. Push him with the punches. Punch, 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 knee. Punch, 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 knee. We get close, bang, bang, out. We kind of go bang and click. Bang, 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 out. Okay? Push him, push him. We gotta push him the whole round. If anything, we need to get on top. We need to get on top one time. And we'll finish this fight. Upcoming, our third and final round of this welterweight championship fight. Thus far, John Alessio fighting a very smart fight, Chris. Will he be able to continue to do so, or will the champion find a way to finish here in the final round? You never know how the judges are gonna see it. Sometimes you gotta do a lot to take it away from the champ, but in my opinion, Jun's gonna have to do something drastic to win this fight. Remember, this fight can end at any moment with the strikes from either of these fighters. Both with KO power in their hands and feet. And proven records to show that knockouts. Ronald John looking to land one of those hooks or uppercuts to finish the fight against the natural John Alessio. You can hear Ronald John's corner telling him he needs to push the fight. Oh, another big takedown by Alessio. It's not looking good for the champ right now. Elbows, John. All you did is take down, shut the circle. Forms and elbows. Forms and elbows. Last round, John, you got to go. I'm not sure what it is. The corner of Jim just said that sounded interesting. I can translate the Hawaiian pigeon, Chris. Ronald's corner said that uh, they believe John Alessio is kind of riding the timeout, not really not really willing to engage on his feet. And that he, he wants to ride the timeout, ride to the victory. He should have been playing hockey. Maybe making a comment to John Alessio's heritage from British Columbia, Canada. Good stand-up by referee Herb Dean. Good news for Ronald John. But John Alessio with yet another takedown here in the third round. This is the final round of our main event here at King of the Cage Renegade. We've seen fireworks earlier in the night. Ronald John hoping for some here in the last round. Alessio again scoring points with the takedowns. Jun's been effective neutralizing Alessio's attack from this position inside the guard. But I tell you what, I think he really has to win by submission or knockout at this point to win the fight. John Alessio attempting to pass the guard. Trying to turn Ronald John every which way but loose. We might see another stand-up from referee Herb Dean before this is over. Ronald John needs to dig down deep and get to his feet if he's going to make it happen now. But John Alessio in too John much control. Herb Dean setting up the fighters once again, stopping the clock. Asking the fighters to begin once again. Alessio with the tried and true takedown on the machine gun. Will the takedown show the way to the belt? John Alessio certainly hopes so. Well, it depends on what the judges are thinking, but I think in most of the judges' eyes, when you're on top the whole fight, you're winning the fight. Well, this is where John Alessio wants to be, on top. And I expected to see Alessio with the stand-up doing better because of the training that he's been going through lately, staying in Detroit, training with front gym, professional boxing trainers. And he's been heavy-handed and quick in the past here, but Jun's boxing was really, his counter-boxing was really impressive tonight. However, when it's gone to the ground, it's been all Alessio. Once again, Herb Dean standing him up. Ronald John getting multiple opportunities to find the KO. And every time, Alessio able to find the takedown. And every one of those takedowns taking the heart and the wind out of Ronald John. 
a great fighter, not able to find the road to victory here. I think the, the corner of Ron Jun trying to appeal to the judges by screaming, saying he's not doing anything. Once again, they're being standing up for the final time. Only 15 or 20 seconds left at this point. Alessio with the inside leg kick. Ron Jun defending the takedown. The champion's not going out without a fight. So our welterweight fight, our main event for the 175, 170 pound title of King of the Cage is over. It's going to be up to the judges. However, with multiple takedowns, John Alessio at this point has got to be the favorite, Chris. Well, I've got to agree with you. I think that Alessio controlled the fight. I think in the stand-up region, most of the times, Jun was really, was winning, which surprised me because I thought with Alessio's training, he'd be able to do a little more than he had. However, every time he got positioned on top and was able to get in a couple of shots, and in my opinion, he was winning the fight in aggressiveness and grappling. All right, so as the judges tally up the scorecards, several different criteria do count here in King of the Cage. Grappling, striking, and ring generalship or aggressiveness all count. Remember, this is our main event, 170-pound championship. Ronald Jun, who won that belt by defeating Shoney Carter, our last pay-per-view, King of the Cage, Sin City, defending it here against the natural John Alessio. Both these fighters in extremely good shape. They could have gone five rounds if they had to. However, here in California, championship fights are only three rounds, as opposed to Nevada State Athletic Commission's rule of five rounds for championship fights. really took the fight to Jun tonight. Jun was able to counter with the boxing standing up, but on the ground he had no answer for Alessio's assault. Yeah, you know, Ronald Jun really wanted to keep the fight on his feet. He wanted to exchange and go for the knockout. However, Alessio, being the smart fighter that he is, was able to keep the fight in his world, threw a couple punches and went for the takedown every time and controlled Ronald when they got there. Well, he studied the fight really well. He knew what he was doing when he got in there, and he was able to apply his game plan and win the fight. Also, we need to take a look at some of our replays. You know, John Alessio doing what it took. He got the takedowns like we said so many times. And also, you know, Ronald Jun really almost made it pay a couple times when he overcommitted. You know, Ronald coming in with the counter punches almost seemed to keep Alessio on his heels until he had saw the opportunity for those takedowns. Well, we got some other great fights that happened here tonight in the 145-pound division. Greg Mayer looked to be in control early, but then it was all Charlie Valencia. Yeah, you can see you know, Charlie Valencia going for that heel hook. Greg Mayer, like I said, with that wrestling experience, not really very knowledgeable about the submissions, though. He, you know, he waited too long, and Charlie
Charlie Valencia retain his 145-pound belt. On to our next match, the 185-pound belt, the middleweights. Dean Lister and James Lee. Dean Lister, the Abu Dhabi absolute champion, showed why he's so great on the ground. Looks like he could have picked any submission he wanted to win that fight. Well, we had one belt changed hands tonight, and it was right here, Alessio versus Ronald Jun. Alessio controlling the fight with those big takedowns all night long. You can see right there, Ronald John trying to fight off his back for almost the entirety of the night. And when he was on his feet, he wasn't able to capitalize on it like he's done so many times in the past. And I know we'll see Ronald John back, possibly a rematch in the future. And he's a force to be reckoned with all over the world in the welterweight division. You see those heavy hands right there from Ronald John, even when he's on his back. If that gives you any idea of how dangerous he is on his feet. The new King of the Cage heavyweight. All right, so from King of the Cage, Renegade here in Saboba, California, we have three championship fights. Only one belt changed hands. It's been a great night of fights. I'm Eric Apple for my partner Chris Cordero. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on King of the Cage.